Greetings, YouTube. Alan Lou back. Today I am joined with another Bravo aficionado from SoCal. Would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Bonjour. Hello. Uh, my name is Thomas. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm also a Bravo main from SoCal. Part part of the prestigious group of Bravo mains down here. Yeah, and uh, well, if the at, during the ProQuest season this year, I wasn't able to take down a ProQuest, but Thomas here was, so. I, I managed to take it home once. You've had much better road to national success than I have, so. I haven't seen you at any roads to nets, though. Have, how many have you gone to so far? I only got to go to one at Collector Legion. I meant to go to Odyssey oh. Games, and I mm -hmm. slept right through it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to be trying to find some for next week, if there, if there are still any. I've been, I've been a bit too lazy about it, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, and also back-to-back -back is pretty rough. I haven't yeah. done a back-to-back -back, like ProQuest or RTN this year. So Yeah. All right, well, today we wanted to just talk about the new Bravo card that was released. Uh, we'll touch a little bit on, you know, the Unity mechanic, uh, some of our thoughts on, like, the quote-unquote term mid-range and flesh and blood, and also probably um, how this will fit into the deck and maybe some, some ideas we have. But, yeah, before we get into it, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. and uh, Ring that bell. Yep, ring the bell if you want. <laughs> and uh yeah so let's uh let's go through the card the new card that kale spoiled i want to say like two days ago was is kale uh, our our lord and prophet yes our, <laughs> our lord and savior kale mccreeth <laughs> um starstruck seven cost yellow strip card 10 power blocks three bravo specialization um notably it doesn't have the aria border even though it's bravo specialization but uh, so maybe in the future there's going to be Bravo. But I didn't not notice Aria. that. But Ooh, yeah, oh. could also just be a design Trust choice. Um, I haven't kept up with like the art um, direction of the game and stuff like that. But let's go into the effect crush. When this deals four or more damage to a hero, the only attacks they may play or activate during their next turn are attacks with base greater than the damage dealt this way and unity. When this defends with a card from hand, create a seismic surge token under any number of heroes' control. So, I will give the floor Beautiful. to you first, Thomas. Oh, oh my! What do you Sounds What do good. you think of this card? If you had to get, rate it on a scale of one to ten, what would you give it? Uh, this is like a a, a Starvo out of ten. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this is probably better than Spinal Crush and Crippling Crush. Kale said that. Uh, I I believe, and and I I think he's right about that. Uh, even if it didn't have the unity mechanic, I think it would be better because uh, this. Well, it's better than Spinal Crush, I think, because ten is first of all a much different number than nine when it comes to blocking, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this undominated is is so much better than Spinal Crush undominated. Yeah, because um, you would need to block seven instead of six to stop the crush. Yeah, and then. Why is it better than Crippling Crush? I guess because like a lot of aggro decks can do can still do a lot with two in hand and one in arsenal, right? So mm -hmm. uh, this is truly, except for in the Guardian Mirror, which obviously Bravo doesn't really need help with, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like except in the Guardian Mirror, uh, this is this is going to be pretty amazing universally. So yeah, what are what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so. When I heard rumblings that the new card would be better than Crippling Crush, I was hesitant at first. But then I saw the card, and I was like, this card's pretty good. Um, I think what you said is totally right. Um, when it comes to Spinal... like, uh, Regardless of the attack value, if Spinal Crush hits, they can still do one action. If Crippling Crush hits, they, um, like you said, have two cards in hand and one in Arsenal and can still you know, chain together a pretty good turn with that. Like Viscerai can still go... Mob Sky Shrill Rosetta with three cards. You know, Briar can still go uh, non attack, attack, Rosetta, or something. So, Crippling Crush, while it does get a lot of value, still um, your opponent can play through it. Uh, when yeah, it comes like they can to, yeah. still, still present 12 back. Yeah. Or like 11 or 12 or 13 pretty, pretty easily, uh, even through it. Yeah. So, yeah. I will say that Crippling is the most universal of the three that we're talking about simply because stripping cards from any deck is valuable um except for i guess wizard because they can just <laughs> play their cards anyways um yeah. before discarding them or prism can like play out certain auras from her hand and then just eat the damage and pass 
Um, but Starstruck also doesn't matter in that situation either. But uh, in terms of Starstruck, against the decks, it's good against, which is a lot. Like basically any deck that deals physical damage, including Bravo, because Anothos is base four power. Uh, if it crushes, yes, it's, you it's, basically uh, stop their turn. Play or activate. When I saw activate, my eyes bugged out for a second. Yeah, because Dawn, I thought mm -hmm. that wouldn't be part of it. But <laughs> yeah, Dawnblade is. is base three power. Rosetta <laughs> yeah. is base two power. Anathos is base four power. Uh, I highly doubt that Bravos will switch to Sledge in the mirror because that basically <laughs> requires a whole deck change, and I doubt <laughs> that'll happen. But yeah, basically for you know most of the matchups where this is good it if it does crush it basically stops their turn unless they're specifically running certain things like um east strike for example but even if they have east strike which is base five they would still need to block what five dam no six damage yes, yeah six, six they would still yeah. need to block six damage which i mean if you're blocking six you're like pretty close to stopping it anyways so yeah, it, it comes over a lot of things. Um, in the mirror, it's definitely less important because you just have so many big attacks. Uh, like Cranial Crush will come in for eight. So if you just block three, that's fine. Like uh, you have a bunch of eight power blues that can come through. So things like that. So it's definitely, in my opinion, less... The, the Crush of spe effect specifically is less of like a, a Guardian Mirror thing. But mm -hmm. uh, the Unity mechanic just makes this card completely universal regardless of what matchup you're playing it in. Except Wizard, of course, because you're pitching instead could of blocking. I, could I... Uh quickly mention a couple more things before we yeah. dive into the unity mechanic because that's going to be a whole box of, box <laughs> yeah. of words mm -hmm. um so uh this is like righteous cleansing like now there's no reason to run righteous cleansing i 100%. guess i mean it, it doesn't like directly replace it with its effects like if you if maybe if specific combo decks get really prevalent righteous cleansing can become effective but uh yeah so, uh a a seven for ten yellow strip is is super versatile itself because this can pay for pummel right mm -hmm. um and like this paying for an early pummel and then you know getting to pitch stack that for for late game is going to be fun to set up um but and and also like what this card just represents to me is like the bravo deck getting to be maybe about as like refined as it can get in the sense of, I think before this card, there was not a clear, clear cut best set of threats to run, right? Like some people still run a race space. You ran uh, Red Thunderquake successfully at last uh, yeah. Pro Quest season. Like some people aren't running three choke slams, but uh, I think I think with this in the deck, the the like general play strategy of Bravo, which is you just want to draw three blues and a threat each turn. Um, this this makes that so much more streamlined, especially being able to pay for pummel because now like this in a hand instead of a red threat when you also have like a command and conquer, a pummel, yeah. you know like so yeah this is this is gonna push Bravo up, uh, I'd say at least like half a tier right, mm -hmm. like yeah I would say for me like Bravo always always kind of sat around like in between A and B tier like. When I think about him as a hero and just what he can do compared to everyone else, it's just like, I, I feel like putting him in B, but when I actually go out and play and see, well, what he can do, but same thing, but it's like, well, maybe he is an A, I don't know, like, it's it's fine, like, um, but I think at, like, the very highest level of play, there is just less reason to play Bravo for sure, but this card definitely uh, helps push him up, him up a bit. Um, also, like, does this... Like I think they need to make Remembrance legendary if they're going to be <laughs> printing more cards like this. I don't think they should ban it. Having one Remembrance, that's fine to me. That's like, you know, anyone mm -hmm. can run one Remembrance, right? Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, getting to shuffle these back in, like playing more than three of these in a game, that's kind of, and playing more than three, I don't know, Spinal or Crippling, like that doesn't seem fair, so... Yeah, remembrance is like a whole nother can of worms. Yeah, I have my thoughts on it. You have your thought. Everyone has their own thoughts on it, really. Um, this this does affect that debate, though. That that was my main point. Yeah, just that, having like that's... more powerful yeah. cards, basically. Mm -hmm. I think also another thing um, that you touched on a bit was the fact that it's yellow. And um, traditionally, at least for like the past year, Bravo didn't really play yellow cards. Um, back way back then, when um, Prism was a thing and Library of Solana was like 
kind of a thing. Um, this is anti library. Yeah, that's a great. Point. Yes, it is. This card is anti library. So that's you know, so once funny. Prism comes back, may, uh, you definitely want this. But yeah, people are or like Kale was, I think, the first one to popularize uh, yellow disable and um, even throwing in some righteous cleansings for the Prism matchup because if they ever got library out and you weren't able to get rid of it, it was doomed. But I mean, the Prism I, matchup was I already kind of doomed. Voice. But, uh... Yeah. Sorry, I can hear you again. Yeah, let me uh get your camera back. Yeah, but as I was saying, it was it's basically like, I mean, the prison matchup back then was miserable regardless. So if you, if you ran those yellows, but um, it at least it gave was, you like it was, it was almost like why why run the yellows? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, because even back then I just ran red disable because I was like, uh, yellow. I see the the reasoning, but uh, red is one more damage. But yeah. um, at least back then, there were situations where when I drew the yellow disable. Or the righteous cleansing, it did matter. For example, like if you draw this and a zealous belting in a showtime, mm. you can still play it out. Whereas before, if that was like a red disable or a red thunderquake or any other red card, your turn is basically garbage, right? So it being yellow does um, change things. The question really becomes: Are you what are you replacing in your deck already? Are you replacing a blue because then? the the fact that it's yellow doesn't matter are you replacing a red then the fact that it's yellow does matter so it, it really just comes down to uh how uh people have been playing bravo and ultimately what comes out for it do you want to talk real quick about what we might replace in our decks uh yeah we can, a, a we can, we can talk about it in a little here. bit uh let's let's cover Sweet. the unity portion a bit first but sure. yeah i have my Sounds deck good. list that i ran for um rtn and we can like edit that a bit awesome. nice. but yeah so the unity mechanic when this defends together with a card from hand create a seismic surge token under any number of heroes is control so i think the unity mechanic is great first of all because it's a mechanic that incentivizes blocking which um for yes. maybe the past year or even two years not a lot of decks really want to block like the best decks in the game don't want to block but mm -hmm. um Obviously, good decks like well, except for Oldham. Let's let's not talk about Oldham. But for example, like if you talk about Lexi, he's gone. it's fine. He's gone. <laughs> Lexi definitely doesn't want to block, but she can block. Uh, but she doesn't have armor. Like her arrows block three, but obviously, um, to maximize her turn, she doesn't want to be blocking. And mm. most decks in the game, sorry, not most decks. Uh, a lot of successful proactive decks in the game don't want to block. That's why they're not considered mid range de mid range decks. You know, if you're Briar or Viserai or Phi, or even Katsu, uh, like the math just boils down to the more cards you can keep, the more value you're getting out of your hand. Mm -hmm. And so that's where disruption plays a, a part, of course, because you want to force them to block so that they get less value on their cards. But whereas this Unity mechanic is sort of tackling that issue in a different way, where it's like now these decks that traditionally play off two, three, maybe four card hands, um, in the case of like Bravo, like most of your plays are two or three, with like Spinal or Hammer or Terra Sunder, things like that. Um, now you have an incentive to block with two cards, which I think is really great. Um, did you have any any thoughts on the Unity mechanic? Yeah, I mean, like, I I ran Grandeur of Valahai at, at the Road to Nuts that I went to, um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to keep running it, uh, <laughs> even though it might not be optimal. Uh, but I... The the reason why I run it is the reason why I think the Unity mechanic. Well, so I guess first I'll talk about the Unity mechanic for as Bravo a specifically, for Bravo, and, yeah. and mm -hmm. I guess the the Unity mechanic as a whole. But like thinking of all the the like the breakpoints in the in the math for paying for Bravo's cards, any new ways to incidentally create seismic surge tokens becomes really powerful. Uh, it, it it makes the four power or sorry the four cost red crushes more powerful as well because mm -hmm. like I I think some of my favorite turns is Bravo some of my favorite turns is Bravo are are when like you you read the Lexi's turn correctly about which arrow you have to block and you block it with two cards and then you let the rest hit mm -hmm. uh, and this is like without an arsenal. Uh, and then you know you have a seismic seismic surge popping, and you can present eight back with a meaningful disruption via uh, choke slam or something. Yeah. So any more ways to like incidentally cheat out cards like that uh, is is just going to make all of Bravo's turns so much more fluid and and strong. Um, 
And yeah, what do you uh, think it means for Bravo specifically? I think the unity mechanic for Bravo is specifically in this case is just really good. <laughs> so simply put, um, there are a lot of times in a not a lot of times, but there are definitely lots of t or not. <laughs> let me rephrase. There's I've run into the situation a lot where I want to ar I arsenal say a red choke slam or a red buckling blow, basically a four cards red. And I know that to get the most efficient use out of this red card in my arsenal, I either need two blues and a pummel, which mm -hmm. is quite difficult to do. It doesn't come up like all the time. But the other way is to somehow generate a surge and play it with only pitching one blue. Now, the issue comes so is generating block that surge. Nine. Yeah. Well, right? Block nine, attack for eight. That's so seven. block nine, That's attack for good. eight, or block three, block six, attack for eight, etc. cetera. Um, mm -hmm. The issue is having to take a turn off to regenerate that surge because there's a lot of cards in the deck that uh, use up the surge if you want to dominate spinal dominate disable mm -hmm. um if you want to play crippling crush off two blues etc having a more efficient way to regenerate that surge because a lot of attacks in bravo also carry the surge over you know if you're playing if you're dominating uh crippling crush then you can carry the surge over if you're yeah. dominating the starstruck you can carry the surge over if you Etc. If, if you play CNC, a, you can carry the surge over. Yeah, yeah. So then it's like having a very efficient way to create that surge in the first place is mind blowing. And for or for example, if you're going second and your opponent attacks you and you block six, you make a surge on your first turn, that just opens up like a, Wait, a polarize really instantly. Cool. Yeah, right? Wow. If I, you're going second and you that, block but... with this card on turn zero, you start your first turn with a surge, which completely changes things. It means that if you draw a natural spinal, you don't need to spend four cards to dominate it on your first turn if you already have that surge up. So this yeah, card and, is and, absolutely insane. And I personally, I, I struggle to think whether the unity mechanic or the crush mechanic is better because I think they're both so good. <laughs> yeah, I think they're both... They're they're both definitely amazing, um, and also like the more good crush cards printed, like Bravo's hero ability doesn't suck people. Okay, like on demand <laughs> dominate. Yeah, like in <laughs> are, a, are you, you know, in a like <laughs> uh, oh, I'm subtweeting <laughs> tweeting a lot of people. Okay, here. sure. But yeah, uh, yep. but like yeah, like I guess in a void, just having dominate as a hero power isn't that good. But yeah, you had, yes. you had I, crush I... effects, and 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 also this <laughs> like. Uh, if you if you created a seismic surge last turn and you arsenal the spinal and you block with this, you can have a one card spinal crush. That's why I like running grander at Valahai, especially mm. the more uh, like non zero cost defense reactions that I run. Grander Valahai gets better with a higher density of those because if you you know just use it to pay for a unmovable from arsenal, that's that's really good value. Uh, and so so this creating more opportunities for having two seismic surges in a turn mm -hmm. uh is is definitely going to be really impactful yeah i think well grander is also its own topic um <laughs> i think that <laughs> i haven't honestly tried it enough i don't think it's needed uh but i don't think it's yeah, necessarily no, bad not. either it's it's it, the fabled cards in general except for like plague hive i guess because like in assassin plague hive is like uh, definitely you run that um at mm -hmm. least if you're on like a actually no even the red line decks run it but yeah <laughs> um, but all the other fables, like, you know, well, Blood of Jakrai is trash, but for example, Arknight Shard <laughs> in Viserai, that's something some people play, but not all people. And so I think Grander and, um, what's his face? Yeah. Uh, Arknight Shard really teeter that line Definitely. really well of being playable, but not necessary. Um, I have Ophidia, super playable in some decks, Heart, super playable in some decks. So yeah, I might, I might give Grander a whirl. Um, if it's I fun, to buy it. but yeah, I mean, I love the card, and you know, it's more bling. Who doesn't love more bling? bling <laughs> exactly, in deck? yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so the, yeah, I think we covered the crush and the unity. I'm not sure if there was anything else in particular you wanted to talk about with the card uh, before. Let's say we move on to uh, adjusting decks for it. Uh, real, real quick, I want to mention that that uh, video that's been going around by Organium Tome. Oh, uh, the Flesh the... and Blood is a fighting game. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I think I'm a proponent now of using the fighting game archetypes to describe fat decks rather than uh, the like Magic the Gathering archetypes. And yeah, like the, the traditional card game archetypes. 
Yeah, so like instead of aggro, control, combo, and mid range, we have things like rush down. Uh, that would be like your Phi deck. Mm-hmm. And the, the archetype he put Bravo into that I thought uh, made a lot of sense was the, the grappler. grappler archetype. Mm-hmm. Because uh, what Bravo does is he uh, gets his equipment to give him one or two times of getting like a free block to bring a ton of disruptive pressure back at the right moments and so this this card fits that theme by Mm -hmm. uh, creating incidental benefits for blocking so check out that video everyone yeah Yeah. great great video i I think the fighting game uh correlation is 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 a really good one and I've, i've heard similar things before from other people um but that video puts it together really well uh so yeah let's move on to um how we would adjust a deck so let's look at my deck for forever example. update that's amazing <laughs> yeah so basically i have a deck list that i always update and whenever i make a video on a certain iteration i'll just make a copy of it so that's how i nice. like to keep things organized i'm surprised this deck is only 600 dollars. crown of providence is already like 200 oh it's because i took tunic out <laughs> but yeah yeah um, yeah there we go <laughs> and not having tunic is a, is a big proponent so let me go to the edit section so let's put in three starstruck in the main board I didn't know it was already on February. Pop, yeah. Props to Pop, February. Props to February. Uh, the resolution isn't like super amazing, but that's because there's no yeah. high resolution file available yet. So, but so first of all, um, there is an argument to be made that because this is a yellow, you can lower your blue count slightly. I was already uh, a player that's very high on my blue count. Like I would run forty I, blues into yeah. most matchups, yeah. and I've seen some Bravos go down to like 34, 35, um, not, not 37. Not a fan of those. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, before I ran 40, I ran 39. <laughs> and then I ran 40, and it's like, it's been fine for me. Uh, but now that there's yellow, you can definitely sort of say like, oh, maybe I'll go down to like 38, 39, something like that. So when we're looking at the blues, what stands out to you as something that's cuttable? So... How many are in here right now? In here, there should be 40 blues in the main board. And what's the total blues? Total blues is 42 because I have two in sideboard. But that, this, this gotcha. is optional. But yeah. in terms of blue count, um, I would say things like the unmovables or the staunch or even the blue pummels are considerations. Buckles a consideration also depending on like if Lexi is still a problem you know, after Dust Till Dawn. But in terms of like the six power and up attacks and Showtime and Rouse, I don't think anyone oh, would that, consider that. Yeah, so, or Terra Sunder. So, yeah. so Terra Sunder, Showtime, Rouse, all the six plus power blues, those those all definitely stay. Yeah, those are um, kind of core. And if we count all those, that's yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten blues. So you're you have a th- a core of thirty, basically that ninety nine percent of Bravo decks, in my opinion, will run. You go down to your sideboard real quick. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll just say a, a really really quick aside about why like super low blue count Bravo builds don't work is that like uh, his cards are too expensive, right? If you're going mm-hmm. down to more reds to get the benefit of more threats, you're not going to draw enough blues to play them consistently, and so yeah. then. A way to play them consistently would be to like play super defensively and pitch stack it. But the point of these Bravo builds is purportedly to be aggressive, so that just doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, uh, so I mean, in terms of, so I actually wouldn't cut any blues for this mm-hmm. because uh, I think that uh, a big deck building benefit of it is the yellow pitch stripe, and so if we cut blues for that, that's like not exactly functioning as a benefit in that scenario like it it, it yeah. transforms a blue into a better threat but it's not a blue yeah. mm-hmm. um so like my immediate instinct with this list is uh i would cut the the red thunder quakes um yeah and, from, and then from just, the sideboard yeah and then just move that uh so cut the two red thunder quakes and then this uh staunch response well, so so I guess in 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 my list, I don't run three red buckling blows. Yeah. I stopped running sigils, mm-hmm. and I don't run the thunderquakes. Yeah. Um, but I so so I guess my answer is in in general, I would uh, 
take out some some like maybe one blue and two reds for mm-hmm. for these but yeah what are what are you thinking you want to take out of this list in particular yeah so i think thunderquake is definitely a better card um or is a card that you would want to run if you specifically want to be guardian um because it's better than spinal crush is how i see it um hmm. but now that starstruck is a card it <laughs> While it does not fulfill the same sort of role as Thunderquake, it, in my opinion, fills up the same spot in the deck. Like in mm-hmm. the Guardian Mirror, it's not bad enough that it's that you want to replace it. In fact, it's actually like Crush Effect aside, the Unity is enough reason to run it already in the Guardian Mirror. Turns so off Rouse turns. Yeah, and it's another you know big boy, big beefy attack. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there's no three power attacks in the deck, so the ten power doesn't matter too much. But yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I agree that Thunderquakes probably come out. Um, the whole buckling blow Lexi thing is definitely a fad at the moment, so those spots are also flexible. Um, mm-hmm. But in terms of the main board, for example, because I want if you I want to be running a clean sixty, and if Starstruck comes in and I still want to run forty blues, my question then becomes: What red am I cutting from this sixty? And my immediate thoughts are either sink below or pummel and i know probably like uh, half of the half of the viewers right now are just like half of them are just like pummel why would you cut pummel pummel's the best card in the game the other half's like sink below why would you cut sink below sink below is like in every single deck so and to be honest my answer is just i don't know what better um i would consider also going down to 39 blues uh that would make life more simple um because then um my core actually then becomes like a a 60 straight core and sideboarding becomes much easier. Uh, while it might not be ideal, uh, I just like easy sideboarding. Uh, for a while now, I've been running like a 58-ish card core and like whenever I sideboard before a match, it's always like, oh, is this like a one of or a two of? Yeah. Or it's like something yeah. like this. But when it's a clean 60 like this, it's just like, okay, these three come in, these three come out, we're ready to go type of thing. So, So, yeah, in terms of like, threats in the 60 that you would take out um i think running a two well taking out choke slam from the core 60 for this seems correct i'm not saying take out all three Mm -hmm. i guess maybe take out all three um but uh i think you Wait, do you have any pulverizes in the main? Not Sorry, in the main. So that's another thing. Okay. If you want pulverize in the main board, then um, at least for my deck, then it would be like, well, what to cut next? Um, is there a world where you don't run sink below in the main for Bravo? Like if it's against a Fi, or if, I mean, it covers mounting anger really nicely. But like, mm-hmm. for example, do you just want all threats? Do you not want to filter at all? Do you not want to draw into two sink belows when you have tempo? Because that happens more often than i yeah. can than i can yeah. it, it tilts me every time they're just like yeah i'll block nine arsenal pass and you draw two sinks and you're like well uh i might that lose happens now. so much more than okay than well i don't think it actually happens that much but it's just one of those like such a feels bad moment that it just burns into our mind and it's just like the only thing we can remember from that night mm-hmm. <laughs> um but yeah i definitely uh can also see um cutting choke slam from the quote unquote main board because there are a lot of matchups where it's really good for example like briar um but there are also some matchups where it's only okay like lexi if she has rain razors and you choke slam her great if she double arsenal the bolton shot lightning press also great but sometimes they just you know load bolton shot with go again and they lose plus one but then the rest of their turn is fine so choke slam really didn't do got you maybe like two points of value which honestly isn't enough (laughs) <laughs> for yeah. a disruptive card in Brava. So yeah. I do agree there's a lot of matchups where Choke Slam is okay and Starstruck might just come in for Choke Slam. Or and if it's Briar, you might choose to cut uh Sync or something else because um maybe they're on some super arcane heavy build and they play Revel in Rune Blood and your Sync is just, you know, crying a little bit. But yeah. Mm. So definitely a lot of ways you can definitely change things up. Uh, but I do agree now that Starstruck is coming out. Thunderquake is probably not a necessary card for Bravo anymore. 
Yeah. If, if you want, real quick, just to get a, a second. Yeah, let's take a look at your list, too. List. This is the one I, I think I just came up with. Like, this is how I would put three in the main board. Mm -hmm. And this is what that would look like. And then, so I, I, I bring in eight. And yeah, the, the specific eight depending on the matchup. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So 12. so for 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 mm -hmm. either Rouse or all the immovables come in for every matchup and both yes. for the guardian matchup. Uh, yeah. and then that puts it at forty blues, I think. Or yeah, thirty nine. Cl close there. Or I just did a quick count. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thirty nine. Um so so yeah this is this is what i this is my tentative list i think for when that card becomes legal yeah makes sense i think for example you know crippling crush spinal pummel cnc that goes into like a majority of matchups in the game um, yeah so it makes sense that it's core there choke slam also just talked about used you are has been kind of core for a while now basically ever since the phi revolution of uprising <laughs> uh, during the stubby meta and chokeslam just absolutely dunked on that but yeah and also with with chokeslam and the guardian mirror especially like if you have that arsenal and they come at you with like uh like like i don't know uh an undominated crippling crush and you have a seismic surge token up you blocking nine and then using one card to come back with a choke slam for eight. Like if if they don't block four, they can't pummel you next turn unless they pummel their weapon. But who cares, yeah. right? So choke slam is like anti pummel tech is super important, and I wouldn't want to cut it mm -hmm. below two copies in the deck as a whole. I don't think. Yeah, I think choke slam is is great, but it's also like situational. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas like all the other th like crippling crush, very universal threat. Uh, for example, CNC universal, pummel universal, um, spinal not universal. Like I'd rather run choke slam than spinal in a guardian matchup, for example, um, mm -hmm. because sure, spinal maybe stops their zealous, maybe stops their rouse, maybe stops yeah. them from making a surge. But choke slam is like their rouse comes in for zero, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, I agree there. I think choke slam is probably a card that stays in the deck whether at two or three copies or something. Um, and yeah, my Thunderquakes are probably going to get cut. Uh, Buckling Blow is questionable uh, for now. Uh, definitely a bit of a in-the-moment type of thing for Lexi, but as the meta yeah. evolves, uh, that slot is basically going to be tuned for whatever becomes the meta. And if Bravo becomes the meta, well then, I don't know, maybe just bring the Thunderquakes back. <laughs> I I will be so happy if if... Bravo becomes the meta. I I can't wait. I I've not had enough Bravo mirrors in my recent tournaments for my for my liking. <laughs> I I think for me I it's interesting because whenever I sit across a mirror, it's just the pressure is is too high. It's so for me. much. It's so much. I, but my, I kind of love my, it. My blood pressure rises too much because yeah. I'm like this. This isn't just about the event I'm in anymore. It's not about making top eight anymore. This is about my pride as a player. Exactly. So exactly. It, the same thing happens when I play against Dromai because mm -hmm. it's like I haven't, in an official match, I haven't lost to Dromai in a long time. Oh, and so, I, I, I fumbled a Dromai. That's my, that's my biggest failure as a player is how much <laughs> I fumbled a Dromai. So I'll, I will pay you to teach me that matchup or something. Maybe, For me, it's like it every time I sit across one, I'm like, is this finally the day? <laughs> yeah. and i try not to but like it, yeah. it's just it's just one of those things um <laughs> but yeah starstruck great card i i think I like if we can make for space this. for it with only cutting one or zero choke slams the the basic upshot of this being introduced to the deck list i think is like the choke slams move maybe to the sideboard and this comes yeah. in uh mm -hmm. as like the the threat you just always leave in so we'll 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 see though. I think, yeah, this will this will push Bravo up a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think like just the fact that, for example, let's talk about the the five matchup because I think that's probably the one where this is very relevant. If you dominate a crippling crush early in the game, I it is definitely correct for five to just eat it 
because giving up Shuko on like turn one or two and losing the extra like two or three points of value you get from that over the course of the game is just bad. So yeah. usually they'll just eat it and they can still present, you know, go again. And if they keep a blue, then it's like Emberblade and Phoenix Flame for one. That's just on the low side, seven damage off yeah. of two cards. No, yeah, two cards. If they had a lot of a burst in Arsenal, that's another plus <laughs> six. That's an, that's that's what, 13 damage they can still present yeah. to you off of three cards. Now, if you play Starstruck, they literally cannot do anything. That's huge. Nothing. Because the biggest thing about the five Bravo matchup and why it's so close is that even though you're dominating like Spinals, let's say they have E-Strike at the right time or Crippling and they can still play out a good turn or a CNC and they don't really care because they arsenaled some random blue they didn't want to play. Yeah. What happens more often than not is that as you're dominating them and they have not so great turns, the life totals are still moving down somewhat at the same pace. Like you may be at like high 20s and they may be like high 10s, but they're still like inching down slowly. And then once you lose that one turn, it's just like super difficult because they can make yeah. that 10 point health differential that you just earned from top decking every threat back to back in just one turn. But yeah. the fact that Starstruck for that matchup makes it so that they literally can't do anything it makes it makes that gap wider and while that's more of a feels bad that's honestly just kind of how bravo needs to win like i i think a lot of people talk about how oh i, I you know i got high rolled by bravo he had this and this and this and this well that's honestly how the deck needs to to win a lot of the times because it's not like it's not like lexi where it's like one rain razors three of a kind turn is the deciding factor for bravo the fact that you have it back to back is the deciding factor like if you just have one well, crippling and- turn then it's like that's nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 with Bravo, like you have, if you don't block perfectly, you will you'll die, right? Because yeah. you won't present more damage total uh, than that aggro opponent or whatever. Yeah. But you still have to send stuff back. Uh, one one other thing for for Starstruck is that uh, it's a it's now probably like the go to imposing Showtime play for like the aggro matchups right like pul- pulverize against fire or, or something doesn't do much right i uh, also, would probably yeah. have to agree with that at least where i think before i would always search crippling like regardless of the matchup um i just i'm not sure if that's correct for example but i would just always get crippling um, but now that's well, well, you know, it's thing. it's it's not wrong, right? Yes, like, yeah, it, like it can be it, not the best, it's, but it's, like it's, it's debatable, <laughs> sure. But, but, but I think it's never yeah. wrong to do that, probably. Yeah, uh, but I think, like, for example, just some people will be like, oh, maybe it's better to get a spinal or maybe it's better to get a pulverize, but yeah, f- definitely for like for like the aggro matchups, Briarvis, Phi, Katsu, even Lexi, Azalea, ETC, yeah. ETC. Starstruck is probably the best target to search out. Um, just because the on hit is so much more detrimental. So now my question becomes is do I put imposing back in? Because I recently took him out, so I don't know. <laughs> I think I think Bravo has to run it because like the value you get from it in your opening hand in any matchup you're running. Well, I mean, I guess in, in any matchup, uh, is is just a, a metric crap ton of value right like uh and and i think maximizing that is definitely a necessary part of like the overall bravo package that puts him into the percentages he will need to like win a major event for example yeah Uh, like over what like uh, 10 or 14 rounds like you're going to see the pulverize or not the pulver you're, you're you're going to see the imposing with blues Mm-hmm. For at least a couple uh, of of those matches, probably, and yeah. and that just adds so much value. And and this, I think, this is definitely besides pulverize against like certain matchups. This mm-hmm. is by far the best thing you could impose in search, and and it's like not even close. Yeah. Um, and and that makes it super powerful. I think. Yeah, I think another thing that your comment made me think of was that, um. This is so much better than crippling if you are able to dominate it turn zero. Like, 
infinitely not infinitely better oh wait yeah yeah even because with it no actually show, does something uh, if yeah, you're going yeah, even with zero. no show time or yeah. imposing in like hand. if you just yeah. draw this in three blues like a lot of times i would draw a crippling in three blues and i'm playing against let's say briar or Fi, and i'm like i mean i guess i just play this but i like i wanted to make a surge like because before, in yeah. my opinion, the best turn zero play outside of like Showtime Search something was like Dominated Choke Slam, Arsenal of Cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully another threat. Um, but now this is probably like hands down the best turn zero play. Like just dominate this, and they're like, okay, pass Arsenal, and you're like, okay, I got another one. Yeah, <laughs> or something. That's, 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 that's really good. Because yeah, because crippling discard a card, they just draw it back up. So that's another uh, sad part about that. But yeah. Um, so now my question after realizing that is that I had recently come around to the point where I'm picking second against aggro matchups. For the longest time, I was a, a turn one player because of showtime, because of imposing. And even though I don't get the first real attack of the game, I had felt that showtime and imposing um, increased my odds of being able to chain threats drastically. And that is what I valued about going first because it's not necessarily about um, being able to get the first real attack. It's about being able to chain non-stop threatening attacks, in my opinion. Um, but seems, obviously seems there's a downside to it. The next yeah. Turn. yeah. Uh, but obviously it's a downside because if you go first and literally the best you can do is make a surge and hammer for six or pass, if you don't want them to filter, then it's like you might have just lost on the spot <laughs> against an aggro mm -hmm. deck. Um, but now that they're starstruck, it's like now there's like maybe more reason to go first again i don't know um it's definitely really close and i i struggle to know the answer to that because let's say you're going turn uh let's say you're going first and you have a natural dominated starstruck that's like the best play right let's say you're going second does your opponent attacking and let you filter potentially give you a better chance of getting the natural dominated starstruck um because Assuming they don't leak any damage, which only some decks can do, like Katsu or Fi, and they maybe only leak one or two, which you're mostly fine with. Um, playing this on turn one versus turn two, depending on if you went first or second, isn't too much of a difference. So would you rather play around going second, maybe being able to filter, or would you rather go first, being able to showtime this out or imposing this out? Mm -hmm. It's... I don't know. It's it's always been close for me. Like whenever I play Fi and they picked first or second, I honestly didn't really care either way because I had drawn good hands for both situations. Sure. So. Yeah, I mean, I think so. The fact that this is ten and not nine or eight means that even if you're not dominating it, it's three cards to yeah. to stop it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, or equipment and and cards. But um, I mean, I think whether you go first or second against like aggro matchups or I guess rushdown matchups in the new fighting game terminology. Uh like I my my guess is that going second will still be better. But one awesome thing this does is that if you lose the die roll and you have to go first, this yeah. makes going first a lot less worse. Yeah, definitely. So so that's that's something I'm excited for either way. Yeah, because going first, dominate spinal is good. You lose an arsenal, but still good dominate choke slam is good you get to keep your arsenal but you don't get to make a surge dominated starstruck probably the best one yeah. uh, <laughs> out of the three so yeah another good turn zero play is just, is just happy to see that yeah i didn't i didn't think about the turn turn zero plays uh much so that has got me even more excited for this card somehow i didn't think i could get more excited for it but but i am yeah i think after how much also, we talked about this, this the card in this video, right. I have come around to the fact that this is the best card in the deck now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and when the when the living legend format goes live, Starvo is gonna be oh, a freaking yes. monster mm. with this card. I mean uh, 12, 12 dominate go again. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> Twelve dominate go again. You can't do anything. Have fun. Oh my gosh. I think, uh, yeah, the Unity definitely doesn't matter in that Starvo deck, but unless you're playing like some Yo, yeah. variant or something, but... Oh, yeah, no, that doesn't matter at all. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's 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 funny, because you're, you're not blocking with this plus like an Ice or an Earth or an something card that you need. <laughs> you're just going to eat whatever and come back with this, but yeah. The, um, uh, yeah, and, and I think this does make 
like the fact that it incentivizes blocking with it in some way, I think indirectly makes remembrance better. Um, and and also mm-hmm. with an increasing number of like pitch stacking m- might be it might be slightly more viable to to not pitch stack as much now, like in the Guardian mirror. If 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 you're blocking aggressively with these and playing your sp- uh, your you know like triplings out pretty aggressively or even if you have to block with one like yeah. just later in the mid game just sending that remembrance and shuffling these back in uh, after having blocked with them that seems really good yeah i think remembrance is just one of those cards where it's like once oldham is gone at least i would only really consider it in the mirror I don't imagine there's any other matchup I care about except maybe maybe Dory if I'm specifically yeah. playing against Shin <laughs> or like someone I know plays a very slow grindy um, Dory versus Bravo matchup because um, I think in general most Dories don't do that which is a mistake in my opinion but um, mm. uh, yeah watch out the Dory mod is going to come for you <laughs> well I mean because whenever a lot of a lot of Dories that I've played against in events have run, like, for example, Courage of Bladehold against me when I think, like, Tunic plus Shunt is just infinitely better. Like, Tunic plus Shunt, I, I really don't like seeing Tunic and Shunt. I, I, do love I cry every time. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So, yeah. I think that's just about everything we wanted to talk about in the card. Um, talking about this card with you has gotten me even more excited for it. And I really yeah, hope... Yeah, it's been awesome. I really Let's hope they do some... Again. Some so cold foil treatment or some Marvel treatment or something. Mar- this has to get a Marvel, right? I mean, maybe like, it won't. It would be like, so The cool. Dory one also looks great, too, in yeah. my opinion. But, like, this one looks great also. But, I mean, no one... This is, Shiana, I mean, this is honestly yeah. just kind of a meme card, right? Yeah. Unless... Um, maybe they actually print adult Shiana. Who knows? Um, but they probably if, won't. If, I, I if these all it. come in Marvels and I get the alluring inducement, I'm going to be, like, Kind of mad. <laughs> I, it's like it was like pulling like a what was it? What was the the Benji specialization? In, oh, oh god! <laughs> or like the Data Doll specialization when we're opening um uh ever Everfest? Everfest? Yeah. Um. So why but I mean, Blood on her hands is, is hard. Yeah, that's no, that's the weird. other thing. Unity on a two block card. It's like, well, deal with it. Um, but yeah, I. I'm really excited to see where they keep going with these Unity cards. Yellow is obviously a huge theme in the sort of, you know, Dust Till Dawn, Light and Dark um, Mm -hmm. thematic of the set. So I think that's really cool. Um, Marvel, I... Five power blues with Unity, it would would decrease the the popper count for Dromai, which might be not tolerable, but Mm -hmm. uh, like a five power blue with Unity would be a cool little upgrade for the deck too, I think. Yeah, but I, 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 I could see them adding. So, mm-hmm. I personally think that they'll probably limit the unity mechanic to like a, a majestic so one of special cards. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, that's probably where they'll go with it. Uh, it'll yeah. be interesting to see if they ever revisit it in like future expansion sets. But uh, even just as a, a one of this card is gonna not revolutionize revolutionize the deck. But it'll definitely it improve it. But I mean, it might, it, it might honestly. Um, but yeah, really good card. And yeah, that's all I really have to say about that. Uh, did you want to share any other thoughts or anything uh, before hey, we close it out? Yeah, I think I think we covered most of it. I'm excited for how they'll incentivize blocking in the future and what more unity cards we'll get. And uh, it was it was awesome talking with you as as always. Yeah. Haven't haven't seen you in a while. We haven't gone to the same RTNs yet. Oh, but uh, our, if you go to top. Our big, heads will butt soon. Yeah. Also, my my not my cat. The cat I'm watching for a friend. My cat for now just popped on the screen. But uh, what is yeah? Um, we actually have never uh, faced in an official match, so that'll be interesting. No, I'm I'm excited. I'm wrong. We do. I already told you about my anxiety. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually, there was Lean one more. Into it. There was one more thing I wanted to say. There is one drawback of Unity, and that's that you basically have to block six on something or seven mm-hmm. if you have like sync or something. But like, because sometimes if you're against fire and they just go three, 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 you don't really want to block six on anything. But uh, 
That's true. That that's is, just, that's that just is a true. small downside. I, I, in the majority of cases, there will be something that you're fine blocking two cards with. Like, even also, if I guess, like, you're, or something. you're not blocking with this against Fire Katsu, right? Unless you, like, have to block. Yeah, like, if you had, like, two I copies or something. And Katsu you were... more so, the, or you, you would block with that against Katsu more than five, but, yeah. But, yep, yeah, that's all from me. Um, Thanks for coming on, Thomas. Good day to be a Bravo man. Great day to be a Bravo man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really happy I recently uh pulled the trigger on a cold foil tectonic plating. So Oh baby. That I I'll I'll see that glistening from across the room and I'll I'll yeah. know that <laughs> that you're there. But uh yeah. That was uh all from us today. Look forward to more Bravo content, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh any closing words? Before I close the video again, one last time. I have a nascent YouTube channel, ZZZ Wake Up. Check it out. I want to start posting on there, but that's that's all talk. So <laughs> I'll have something to show everyone soon. It'll it'll be exciting, I think. Yeah, I'm sure Thomas will comment on this video anyways, and you can see his channel there. Down, yes, down below, yeah, I will. Good stuff. Yep, thanks we'll for watching it. YouTube. Um, I'll probably also make like a future tournament report for FI, um, the past Ooh. RTN that I did. Uh, so if anyone is still here at the end of the video, uh, please comment your favorite color. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, Bye-bye. <laughs> Mine's blue. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone.